Okay, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. You are watching the Alt-Tab live show. My name is Steve, I'm here with Kyle, the man, the myth, the legend. You can follow most of his stuff at Awesome Sauce News on the YouTube channels. Network. On the networks of the YouTubes. I'm one year, awesome one, one day you'll get it, Steve. <laughs> awesome Sauce Network. It's okay, yes. it's okay. It's not why we're here today. No, it isn't actually. We're here to talk to you guys about tech, and I apologize right. about all the technical difficulties we've been having up until this moment, yes. but as far as I can tell, everything should be working fine. Uh, but aside from that, Kyle, we just came back from CES. We I'm, did. Uh, I'm, I'm finally decompressing a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back in the office, just kind of relaxing and acclimating. What about you? Yeah, um, me too. I, I think it was a really stressful event, as it usually is. There's so yeah. much to see and so much to do, so many people to talk to that uh, it really is quite exhausting. But it's also really fun too. Um, you get to see it's it's one of those events where everyone kind of comes together. All the people that we talk to online, or you know, people that follow us on Twitter. I got to meet a couple people. Uh, Sergeant Ballistic. I met him. I ran into him during the event on the show floor. Oh, which was super man. awesome. Keep wanting to bump into that guy too. Talk yeah, to him on and, Twitter all the and time. there's you know, of course, the uh, standard variety of, of new tech hardware and stuff like that. That. Right. Um, I actually didn't tour the hotel suites as much as the show floor this year. I really wanted to focus on the show floor. It's one of those events where everyone. Oh god, the audio is coming through. I'm sorry. I'm going to cover it up with the audio. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Little technical Sweet. difficulties. The, today's just been full of those. Yes. Um, but anyway, um, so because of that, a lot of the core DIY. PC stuff is in the hotel suites, like yeah. Corsair and Logitech right. and um, MSI, Gigabyte. All those guys are located off-site uh, because it's it's a bit cheaper to, to have a, a booth there. Right. So I didn't hit those as much uh, as I did the show floors themselves. So I really kind of went there for the full experience. And uh, drones were everywhere. There was a huge presence of drones. So so many more drones this year <laughs> than there were last year. It was almost ridiculous how much drones have exploded. Um, uh. And wearables as well, which eh, I guess you know it, who knows if it, I think it's a Bad. Um, Completely. I think every every CES we go to, it seems like wearables take over more and more, yeah. and and it's, it seems to be the thing that be, that's talked about the most outside of PC DIY. And I feel like that's sort of reversed, but right. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's just something for insecure nerds to feel like they're cool. I think they're still kind of cool, but I just don't think it's worth like two hundred dollars to throw one on my wrist. Yes, and, and I don't for, know. For like we were saying earlier, it's a yeah. simple convenience that's way overpriced for what it is. Right. Yeah. The only thing I would ever use it for. I mean, clearly I don't run, so I'd never <laughs> use the pedometer <laughs> pedometer function. But you know, like okay, a simple <laughs> notification letting me know that I have a tweet or whatever. I can't really right. respond to it very you know, uh, very accurately. So, I mean, mm -hmm. other than a really quick convenience for me, I don't see them being valued at 200 plus dollars. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, that if I could boil it down to something having used uh, one of the Galaxy Gears for a very short period of time, I, I thought it was cool, I thought it was fun, it was neat to have it. I think with the advent of more apps and everything else, and depending on which one you use, obviously, because I'm using a Samsung one that's linked to primarily Samsung hardware, uh, but if you had something that was more open source that, that you got to, I think like the Pebble has a lot of, of open source apps, doesn't it? Right, right. So I, I like the idea of what you can do with it, but for the most part, I find it's just easier and faster for me to check who just text messaged me or what, what the last message was or tweet or whatever. I can just check really quickly and, sure. and move on um, versus with your phone, right? You're pulling out your phone and that's a little bit more of a hassle. Yeah. Um, like you said too, having having it register my heart rate or, or my steps, I'm not really interested in either of those things. I'm not going to take it to the gym and run with it. I don't want to like damage it if I was working out and hit it with weights or something strange. Right. So, I don't know. Unless you want to use the, the smartwatch in, in tandem with the, uh, the new Myonix mouse that tracks <laughs> <laughs> your heart rate, you know what I mean? Then you, I mean, the more you know, the better you game. I it's, guess. But if your heart rate's different on one than the other, then you probably have poor circulation on that part of your body. True, but yeah. true, true. But, That's uh, absolutely true. But what else did you see at CES that you liked, man? Because um, I haven't really gotten a chance to talk to you about it at ben all. BenQ actually had some pretty sweet monitors there. They had a 32-inch 4K IPS panel at okay. 4 milliseconds response time, which is pretty good for IPS. Yeah. Um, but that was more of like the professional grade, um, like editing, you know, workstation type monitor. Okay. Had like five USB 3 hubs in it. It was it was pretty awesome. Wow. All for under a grand. For about a grand, you get a nice 4K monitor. But they also had a 144 hertz refresh rate. Um, I think it was still 1920 by 1080, mm -hmm. but it had FreeSync. So, oh, okay. So, you know, we're starting to see, I saw a lot more FreeSync panels at CES than I thought I would. That's um, the one thing I regret not really having nice. had a chance to see, was, yeah. was in person a demo of that. And that yeah. was the one thing I went into it going, this is what I really want to see, and I oh. never have the time to do. It does what exactly do. what it's intended to. It's just like G-Sync. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between either one, just very minimal, virtually non-existent stutter or lag or anything like that, no tearing. Cool. Um, but uh, that was a really cool, really cool thing to see. Um, what else was super cool at CES? Mm. 
I don't know. What did you racking like? Your brain, racking your brain there. Oh, wait. The, okay, sorry. One more, one more thing that was kind of cool was the, uh, the Galaxy Note Edge. Oh, right, right, right. You phone. were talking to me about that. So it has right. edge screens, basically a cell phone with one curved edge. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the screen on the right side extends, so it kind of makes a little rounded shape on the end there. Right. And that serves as like your, your, your dock, essentially. So instead of having like an Android, you have the app, the, your functional apps at the bottom and mm -hmm. that bottom app dock. Mm -hmm. Now they're on the side and you can kind of swipe through them. Uh, you can swipe through to your Twitter feed or your Instagram feed or a news ticker and then the news ticker will like go alongside up and down. It'll kind of like scroll mm -hmm. uh, through the edge screens, what they're calling it, that little mm -hmm. edge thing. But um, another cool thing is that it is, is you can swipe to open it when you're in an app. So if you're browsing the web and you want to access you know, uh, your Instagram, you can just okay. quickly swipe to the left. Swipe over the curve. Swipe over the curve okay. and it brings it up. or uh, you you can play music from it directly too. So you're in the middle of an app, you're doing something, you kind of want to multitask, quickly sw swipe open the edge screen, tap on music, it starts playing, and then swipe it away and continue browsing the web. Um, hmm. One, I mean, I don't know why they, they didn't do this, I guess maybe to cut down on costs or something, but okay. it would have been nice to see the curved edge on the other side as well if they had both sides curved. Because sometimes I put my pocket, um, my your pocket, phone pocket, my phone in my left pocket, and mm -hmm. when I pull it out, it's with my left hand, even though I'm a right-handed user. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a right-handed user, some people with, that are right-handed like to use the right hand for scrolling and for swiping. Mm -hmm. um, so if I have it held in my left hand, my thumb can't exactly reach on the right side of the phone. So, so you you're kind of stuck uh, if, if that's your tendency. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, all in all, I thought it was a pretty innovative design, and I think uh, for, for the first revision, it looks pretty promising. Are they doing any apps to, uh, other than just for navigation? Yes, so there was actually a really cool um, function on the edge screen where if you mm -hmm. swipe down, there's a, a couple more, more settings or okay. options, I should say, for like little utility tools. So okay. they had like stopwatch, like really quick access things, timer. One really cool thing I liked was a ruler. So you, oh, you nice. click the ruler app, and it actually extends like this whole ruler uh, the, the, the span of the phone, right. the entire length of, this, of, of the phone, you can change the measurement from centimeters to millimeters to inches, which nice. is really handy for, for people like us because you know we're constantly dealing with like little tech, tech parts and we're like, oh, how, how, how long is this or how much clearance yeah. do you have yeah. you know for like uh, between the, the, you know, the, the motherboard tray and the side panel of the case be a to see example. how much cable management room you have. Um, something like that I, I found incredibly useful. So uh, it's interesting to see what kind of steps they'll take with future revisions of the phone and uh, how they'll integrate apps into that little edge screen. So, so like obviously you have, obviously you have like a gap here at the top of your, yes. of your phone. So it's, it's measuring from the very top down, right? Yes, only the, only the span of the screen. Of the so. screen itself, right. Yep. So it'd be kind of cool if they actually had a button or something that they could switch over to and, and take up the distance between there. So you could just put actually this right have to a the little corner. Bit more length. Right? Yeah, yeah. Or just or just start it like I don't know what that would be like uh, like two centimeters or something. Yeah. So just to have a physical two or three. end of the ruler yeah. instead of matching it up with the end of the screen. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Anything else, man? Um, that's, that's all that comes to mind right now. I know there's a okay. bunch of other stuff. I have some content on my channel. If you guys want to check it out, Awesome Sauce Network. Uh, I did about three or four CES videos. They're all pretty short and easy to digest. So if you guys want to check that out, you can see um, some of the other booths that I went to and, and some of the other coverage I got there, which is right. pretty sweet. Right on, man. Yeah. Well, I've droned on enough about my CES stuff on the channel, so I just wanted to get your take on what you saw since we hadn't actually talked yet. Oh, of course. Um, I, could, I can never get enough of your CES stuff, Steve. <laughs> I just eat it right up. It's just so yummy. <laughs> All right, let's All right. let's jump into the first story, which I believe is yours. <sighs> okay, so um, a lot of you guys have been hearing about uh, like the FCC's plans for broadband internet and what they're planning on doing with it. And uh, the chairman, Tom Tom Wheeler, mm -hmm. I forget, yeah, Tom Wheeler, uh, he is planning on he, he's he's claiming that. They're going to have broadband internet come fall under t uh, Title II uh, classification and regulation of the Communications Act, which is good for net neutrality. It's something that uh, advocates of net neutrality have been wanting to see, and it basically puts it in the same ballpark as uh, like the the landline telephone. Basically, the same kind of regulation that that's under, which okay. is um, you know a good thing for for us net neutrality people, um, and of course, the, uh, soon to follow, all of the ISPs are. Uh, pretty much complaining about it and saying that it's going to inhibit their growth and their ability to market, you know, the, their their broadband packages and stuff like that. So threatening, right? They're threatening, and they're what just they making a big stink. Yeah. They're being a bunch of babies throwing tantrums. Essentially, you see all these huge corporations, you know, Verizon, AT and T, Comcast. They're all, you know, something. They're doing something to a brick that's coming out of them. 
I can't say it exactly, but um, <laughs> but Sprint, on the other hand, is kind of taking the other route, and they're saying, you know, it, we don't really have a, a big issue with it. Uh, and there's actually a quote here that says, so long as the FCC continues to allow wireless carriers to manage our networks and differentiate our products, Sprint will continue to invest in data networks regardless of whether they are regulated by Title II, Section, se section 706, or some other light-touch regulatory regime. And that's just, uh, a quote taken directly from Sprint, uh, so who clearly Clearly, you know, is, is acting kind of fearless in this whole thing, and they're just saying, bring it on. It's not going to affect our ability to grow as a company um, or to inv invest in those data networks. Um, you know, even even if it's going to have a little bit more more regulation. Okay. Um, so I thought that was interesting, and 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 it's you know, and some people were saying, well, Sprint's stupid for even saying that because clearly they're they're going to be at a disadvantage right. with this new regulation. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, maybe it's just kind of more of a marketing thing, you know, a marketing move on Sprint to say, let's just go the other way. And and do the say the exact opposite things that all these other ISPs are saying because it makes us look good. I think that's a yeah. possibility. And, I agree with you. There. And you know, I mean, it, it could be working because it's on the headlines of a lot of websites that I was researching today. So I'm like, eh, you know, but you know, it's they're they're all corporations; they can't be trusted. But um, <laughs> I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if any other if any other ISPs follow suit with Sprint or you know how long this continues before uh, before we see any other opinions veering off from the norm. <laughs> That was, right that, that, was, that was, that was, it's all good. Everything's just, fine. Just some soda Everything's here. fine here. It's all fine. We're all good. How about you? Yes, I'm okay. good. So, uh, that, just wanted to point that out. You guys let us know what you think of that. Um, also coming up is the, what's this Gigafactory oh, stuff, yeah, Steve? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got this. I've got this. So, essentially, Forbes, Forbes just uh, wrote a nice story about Elon Musk and the brand new Tesla Gigafactory that, they're, that they are, are uh, producing or creating there out in Nevada. So bottom line is Elon here, just to give you an example of how expensive this Gigafactory is, and which by the way, if you guys aren't familiar with it, the Gigafactory is essentially their, their battery uh, manufacturing plant that they're gonna be creating. So okay. uh, Jenny, Jenny mentions every time I bring that up that, that lithium ion batteries are extremely bad for the environment to, to, to make in general, to manufacture. It's just in the manufacturing process, it damages uh, a, a lot of things. But bottom line is, aside from that, uh, just the foundation alone is gonna cost $16 million. Uh, yeah, this thing is crazy. Um, let me bring up some projected figures of what they actually think uh, the Gigafactory is going to be able to produce. Uh, so by 2020, the Tesla, Tesla's vehicle volume will, will exceed uh, or be approximately 500,000 uh, Teslas per year. So yeah, that's, that's moving on up. The factory's actual output, you're looking at 35 gigawatts, uh, gigawatt hours per year, and it's going to uh, have a pack output of 50 gigawatts per year. Uh, but the space requirement is, is uh, looks like 10 million feet squared and two levels. A uh, total of 500 to 1,000 land acres. That's that's crazy. And 6,500 people. Let's see if I can move it over a little bit to show you the rest of this picture in this PDF. Um, but basically, they're going to be using uh, or creating new renewable uh, power sources in order to provide power for the factory. Uh, solar and wind are obviously the two they're going to try and use out there. Uh, abundant, apparently, in that area. But yeah, I was completely blown away by the, the sheer cost and size of this um, uh, this building that they're making. On top of that, uh, they, the way they found this information out was actually through um, Nevada's, uh, uh, what is it, their permits. They found it from reading through the actual permits that are being, um, that they're applying for in order to build this. So the civils are actually, the civil engineers are out there building this, have to apply for permits to make sure that, that it's uh, going to be safe and that the government's going to allow it, the city and the state side. So yeah, it's, wow. I'm sure know. that 16 million is just like change that Elon Musk found around his house. Right? Yeah, total it's supposed to be 5 billion. And they're putting up 2 billion themselves. Yeah. So he, he poops that out on the daily. That guy's, that guy can afford it. He, that guy must have, I mean, just to get, to get 3 billion in investors. I know. I don't know how hard that is, but a billion's a lot of money. And to get 3 billion in investors to just, yeah, go ahead, Elon, make us money. True. By 2020. Uh, that's approximately also when they believe that the Tesla is actually going to start making the money too. So yeah. they're not they're not really making money. I think Elon yet. Musk is is the so. real Tony Stark. Dude, he totally is. I swear. Look at him. He is Iron Man. <laughs> he's freaking. And amazing. he's just like that's how we got the funding. He's like, look, yeah. give me a billion dollars, you'll be in the next real Avengers. I'll get you a suit and everything. 
God, could you imagine if you made that? Oh. All right. He should be Iron Man. All right, so he, he he is Iron Man, dude. What are you talking about? There's His no, girlfriend's there's no like if. 18 or something. It's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I might be slightly out of order here, but I've got this uh, this Google Glass gets a reboot from you. Kyle, up next. Uh, yes. Um, so Google Glass, we all are familiar with what a disaster that was. And, um, it's just it's just really expensive for something that lasts what three hours. Super expensive, horrible battery life. I think worse than three. Was hours. it less than three? I thought oh, it was my bad. way less. Um, okay. I could be wrong, but that's that's the last thing I remember about mm -hmm. it. Um, and nobody really knew what it did exactly, or why would you why you'd need it. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the last keynote that Google had, they didn't really talk or mention Google Glass at all. So a lot of mm -hmm. people were under speculation that it was being scrapped wow. altogether. But um, recent findings have it that uh, there's now um, new leadership or new management uh, as far as like key players in the Google Glass Explorer program. Okay. Actually, the, the Google Glass Explorer program is ending, and then there's something new coming after it uh, with a, a bunch of different leaders. So there's this one guy who is, his name's Fidel. Okay. Fidel, Ross, Castro. combination of Ross I'm and kidding. Fidel. Uh, these, these guys, basically, they work for... Um, they're independent contractors, but they one of the guys made the original iPod. He designed the original iPod. So there's a good chance that the Google Glass is getting a makeover as okay. far as visuals and aesthetics. Um, and then the other person worked with other companies such as Gap, Mattel, and uh, so I don't know. It seems like they're trying to do something with it. But the point is, is that it seems like it's going from this really weird niche product to uh, a mass-produced um, consumer grade item. Okay. So basically, everyone's almost certain. Uh, most of the market's certain that they're that they have plans to release it as a consumer friendly direction. Okay. Uh, item. So. So basically, instead of this high <clears throat> high end fifteen hundred dollar item, maybe they'll refresh it, or or maybe this is just a a message out there to investors. Please, please don't don't. Don't forget that Google Glass could actually be something amazing that everybody would want to buy, right? Uh, not just people who can afford that kind of price tag. Exactly. Yeah. And absolutely. they'll probably, I mean, and they're, I'm pretty sure that they're going to make it a little bit more useful too. Like they're probably going to retool the product um, just to make it a bit more uh, attractive for people that you know are into wearables. <laughs> <laughs> We discussed as we as we just completely tore apart here at the beginning of the show. If yeah. If a computer on your wrist isn't good enough, have Put one on, on your face. face. Yes. Yeah. I still think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's just yeah. it just I really believe that it should be more affordable. I agree. And at that point, I think that they do have a product that everybody would like. If maybe instead it, maybe instead of both eyes, it'll just be a monocle now. A monocle? <laughs> That's something Apple would do. Oh. Catering to all the hipsters. Oh, the, the new smart even, monocle. That's not even hip, though. That's the new like smart. So oh, exactly. That's why hipsters oh, love it because oh it's so not mainstream. Oh God. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Fair enough, Kyle. The smart monocle. Oh. <laughs> it sinks to my iPad Mini when oh. I blink. It's it, and unfortunately, I, I don't see very well out of that eye, so it's even worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> Anyways, moving right along. Uh, next up, you guys have probably heard a little bit about this. Uh, we picked this story up from Tech Report. Uh, Cyril Kowalski has uh, written about it. But basically, if you at home have uh, have been messing around a little bit with Steam for Linux, uh, currently right now there is a bug that's deleting your data. And it has to do a little bit with, uh, um, well, I should just jump over to what Neo, Neo One Reports is, is saying about it. Basically, he picked up this story from Neo One, uh, where I'm trying to find his name, a GitHub user. Uh, Doofy had mentioned how he lost his entire home directory, um, starting steam.sh with uh, Steam Debug 1. A GitHub user actually uh, spotted the error. His name is going by TCM1911. He basically said, based on a certain line of code, uh, probably is the culprit. And if I break it down as simple as possible, uh, what's basically happened is if you have uh, Steam running on Linux and you've moved your Steam directory, What's happened is that left a variable empty, and instead of the variable that would normally be the Steam directory with a forward slash, it would remove everything just the forward slash because there's nothing in front of it. So basically dropping out to uh, deleting the root. And if you were logged in as admin, then that meant that you basically deleted everything. Um, but yes, so as painful as it is, that's what basically happened, um, and, and you should just be really careful when, when logging in as admin. 
that's probably the the most important thing about this particular story. So no wonder Linux is free. That wasn't <laughs> Linux. Uh, okay, so I know. Okay, I, okay. I, I was going to say it was just it was the syntax that they wrote with. They should not have added the forward slash and. Right. And the little bit that I know about Linux, apparently that means that uh, if you don't have the variable listed at something, and therefore uh, a null, it would it's just deleted. basically it would just basically delete it everything wiped. from that particular um, root, as opposed to the folder and everything above that. Anyways, yes. Someone has has lost their career as a coder. I don't I don't know. I mean. Valve is awesome, so I highly doubt that they're going to just completely fire somebody based on a mistake in syntax, that they were probably just writing code really quickly. I mean, it's still in beta. It's not It's not fully released yet, so True. I don't know. I mean... Things hmm. happen. Things do happen, and that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Um, all right, so the next story I have has to do with um, uh, Twitch adding on mu music libraries and uh, introducing background tunes basically for game streamers. Um, if you guys haven't already heard and you like s Twitch streaming, you, all, you also probably remember the time where Twitch removed your ability to play music. And unless it was, uh, unless it was, it was free basically or, or open source. Um, but I'm getting this article from Game Crate. Uh, thank you, thank you, Robert Workman, for writing this up. Uh, but then, of course, I, I found out uh, from Twitch's actual website uh, more information on that. And the bottom line is that they're basically providing uh, music that's pre-cleared for Twitch broadcasters. Uh, you can check that out at music.twitch.tv, which I'm looking at right now. Uh, currently, they only have about 500 songs that are available for you to use. Uh, majority of that is EDM, apparently, but their intent is to add more music uh, from, more from all genres to the library, obviously. They're not going to just stick with what they currently have, but this is where it started out. Um, pretty cool, uh, if, especially if you want to be able to use some music here. I don't, I don't recognize any of these names, but a couple names you might recognize: uh, Mad Descent, Dim Max, Spinning Records, OWSLA, and Monster Cat, uh, as well as some others. Uh, Monster Cat was actually spinning last night, uh, which, which I happened to grab a screenshot of. They had like 4,200 viewers, which is pretty nice. Oh, you're spinning on Twitch. Yeah, they were spinning on Twitch, <clears throat> uh, which to is the next section. celebrate the Twitch music thing. Well, that's the second half of the announcement. Basically, they're also allowing you, the the streamer, to basically stream your own music. And, and DJ to your friends. So there's quite a few different options that are available. Um, I, I listened to Monster Cat for a little bit. They were doing a 24-hour thing that's apparently still going right now. Let me refresh it and just see. Yeah, yep, they've got 2,600 You could be a still. stream DJ. You could DJ from home and stream to a party. You could. And hope, hope that their internet connection doesn't die because that would totally kill the party. Or you could, you could be holding a party and then just like drop on to Twitch and listen right. to someone else stream. That's true, yeah. and it could be like you have a professional DJ streaming or DJing for your party. Yeah, so you, that's pretty sweet. So you should probably, if you're going to do a DJ gig on Twitch, you should probably figure out when everybody else is going to have their parties and figure this out, man. Because you can't just like do it whenever you want. You got to do right. it when when Kyle's having a party. Make sure that tweet to Kyle. Make sure that you live your life surrounded by other people. <laughs> just don't live your own life. Coordinate your entire <laughs> life by someone else's Twitch that's, that's where I was going with it, Kyle. That's what you need to do. You need to figure it all out. Moral of the story. <laughs> Sweet. Well, so, I mean, so obviously people can do this. They can play. For the people that are that are streaming, right. like, let's say, gameplay or whatever, they put some EDM in the background, and that's all monetizable. This is all royalty-free stuff. That's exactly... Well, they're, they're, they <clears throat> basically made it so that it's pre-approved, which I assume would mean that if there were any royalties, they're guaranteeing that there aren't any. Gotcha. So my, my guess out of all that. But Sweet. yeah. That's or that news. they're paying Twitch some I wonder. I wonder why it's it. all EDM. Like, is that just the best... Has that been deemed the official music of, of gameplay? Like, that that's the best music to listen to when you're playing games? Like, why isn't, <laughs> any, like, why isn't there any, like, Faith Hill? Like, where's the country music when you're playing League of Legends? Like, so my barbecue guess... Barbecue stain on Pentakill! Pentakill! <laughs> No, my guess is that it's probably easier to. It's, it's um, probably because it has no lyrics. Maybe also you can put it in the background. That's probably and, something and, and people choose a lot. Over it. I yeah. bet that's probably a good reason too. I'm thinking the other one is too that it's that popular. if you're if you're going to go unlicensed, I feel like the people who are making the music directly and they have, you know, um, a, you're basically making music on a level that maybe a lot of others aren't. I feel like there's way more um, EDM artists out there than there are 
like maybe country music that are online, just because I feel like EDM, oh, yeah. electronic dance Absolutely. music, right? They're already using computers. It's already right. one and the same versus like maybe there are less country user, c country artists People out there. People like actually doing new. a studio recording of them playing guitar right. and, and right. vocals and stuff. Yeah, that's that's just a guess though. But I, Those I don't independent know. EDM music producers or artists are probably just kids in their mom's basement or something like that. I mean, it like could be adults too. Dials. But it's just but it's totally it though. No, they're all dials. children. <laughs> no adults. No adults make EDM. Right, right. right. I, you're. I stand corrected. That's right. Um, what do we What do we got next, Kyle? Uh, next is oh, <clears throat> I stumbled across this article really quick. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I thought it was interesting. Some guy is obsessed with wishing everyone in the world a happy birthday. That's like, he's like literally obsessed with it. So what he did was he dropped about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars on studio recordings to record over 22,000 unique songs featuring a, a custom-made happy birthday song with individual names in it. So regardless of what name you have, even if it's a weird, obscure name, there's, there's a very likely chance this guy has made a birthday song just for you. And the name of his YouTube channel is One Happy Birthday. That's one, the number one happy birthday. And you just go there, you can type in your name, search under his videos, and he has thousands upon thousands that he, he, he made himself. Well, he paid to have them made. He uh, recorded them in a studio in Los Angeles and had a professional singer sing this happy birthday song wow. 22,000 times um, <laughs> because he's crazy. So uh, we, I, I did the honors of looking up our, our very own names, and even kay. though it's not our birthdays, we still have a, a dedicated birthday song just for us. So Steve, if you will, take us away. You should listen to this in here. Is it playing? Yeah. It's so jazzy. Happy birthday, Kyle. Yep. Happy What's up with all the like candies and everything? Is that so a birthday? He even went so far as to create different backgrounds for each each uh, person's birthday song. So you can get mine's Kyle Chocolate. This is the Kyle Chocolate background, but there's also like a regular Kyle birthday one with. I love the banana. It's delicious. <laughs> So, oh god! I mean, they they added up all the videos, and it's literally like three months straight of happy birthday music. If you just put them all back to back, like something ridiculous like that. <laughs> what? And this lady. Are there dogs? She... <laughs> and then she just like starts freestyling, as you can tell. I think she's gone crazy. I think this lady yeah. has gone crazy after after the five thousandth song. I think she probably lost it. Something so snapped. So are there any funny yeah. names that you found? One. Oh, um, I found one that was, uh, so Happy Birthday Bartholomew was pretty fun. Having her squeeze in Bartholomew <laughs> is, is very entertaining. <clears throat> I do love the banana. Thank you. Let's try it. Go ahead. What else you got? And uh, Happy Birthday Dick, I, I always I thought was hilarious. <laughs> uh, she just says it so enthusiastically, like she really means it. Oh, um, let me try and find one real quick. And, um... I just feel bad for this lady because she had to sing this over and, and over. over and, and yet over. You, you hear them all and she sounds excited in every one. So I'm, I'm guessing that's got to be auto-tuned somehow because Lord knows I would kill myself by the third time singing this song. <laughs> and now it's stuck in my head. This is going to be stuck in my head all day. Oh, God. Oh, my God. The wow. Happy D-Day or B-Day? Happy B-Day. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Oh my wait, god. Wait, wait, you gotta hear the Felice Cumpleaños. Okay, all right. Please. And there's a banana with chocolate on it. That's... And chocolate, chocolate balls, salty balls. Banana and chocolate oh. balls. All right, all right, enough all right, of that. Dick enough chocolate. of that. Enough dick chocolate for now. Damn, damn it. That's that's you, the message you guys bring to Linus for uh, Linus Tech Tips. Still oh God. Dick chocolate. Okay, so it's about it's about halfway through. Should we take a minute to, to go through some questions? Yeah, the, if you guys have any questions about the tech we've been talking about or our, our oh moral boy. obligations. Um, yeah. <laughs> or what you just watched. That's, let us uh, know. We're here to help. And we're here for you because we care. <laughs> we caused some trauma. We're here to help you uh, get over it. Yes, yes. All right. So if you guys have any questions. Dun, 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 dun. Questions, anything, comments. Anything from the chat. Concerns. I'll, I'll grab some stuff from the 
Uh, also, feel free to tweet us, guys, at Steve underscore OMG or at Forever oh, Kyle down below. Down below. Ah. Down in the middles. Honing in on it. You get? You got it? <laughs> you got it. Got to give you some love. Got to give oh. you some love. Give it. Give it. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. There you go. That's fantastic. How can they miss it? <laughs> hey. All right. All right. And Question: see. When will Newegg have FreeSync monitors in stock? That's hard to answer, uh, especially on our end, because uh, that's usually handled by the, the product managers, that's specifically correct. for monitors and stuff like that for that category. So we would have to talk to one of them to find out when the first FreeSync monitors are going to be hitting our store. And even then, I'm typically they don't even know. They usually tell me some some, some quarter one, quarter two, of yeah, whatever yeah. year. They usually don't know. They're always, uh, they're or they don't scheming. like to say. They like to be very yeah. secretive with their plans. Well, and they and the times that they don't know too. I mean, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're in the dark as much as we are, right? Because they're waiting on inventory supply from from the other vendors and stuff like that. But hopefully soon, I'd like to see it soon. Possibly. Yeah. I want a review sample. Uh, Selmore, Selmore Smith on Twitter asks, uh, or actually states, that the point of Google Glass isn't that you use it intensively. The battery would actually last most of the day and not just three hours. So his point is just basically it's supposed to be there for you to use it whenever you need it, not that you should be using it all of the time, like watching videos or recording things. or uh, I feel like you'd be recording video most of the time. Yes. If it was, if it was you. I would be. Yes. So and that's I a good that point, Selmore. Thank you very much. Sorry. And, and we're getting music. Give right. more music. Uh, somebody asked what our favorite mouse pad is. Uh, geez, favorite mouse pad? Joe McCann. I really don't have a favorite hey, mouse pad. Joe McCann. As long as, it's, as long as it's a good surface, I'm okay with it. Uh, but I definitely like one Do you one have any preference to... of like material or anything like that? Um, I prefer I prefer a mouse pad that's more stiff than than the polypropylene. <laughs> like like I don't like these types as the fabric to, type. Yeah, the fabric style. Okay. Yeah. I actually like I don't like the hard ones for some reason. And I think the reason why is because I, I've gotten used to using the fabric ones also as a wrist pad. Mm -hmm. So instead of, because like usually I'll get, like my wrist will get scuffed up from the edge of my desk because it's pretty rough. Right. So what I'll do with the, the fabric one is I'll kind of leave part of it right hanging over. So it just, it protects my wrist a little bit more. Okay. And, uh, I just like the feel of it on my on my wrist as well. Okay. Um, but right now I have the Thunder, the Thunder Pad from Oris, our friends at Oris. Uh, it's, it's one of those XL. Mouse super, pads. super it's massive. Like Thunder P3, and it like spans the entire width of my desk. That's almost. awesome. So it it ha it houses my mouse, my keyboard, and it's extremely water resistant. Um, I did a test on it. I pour some water, and it just drops right off, almost like Damn. it's been liquipelled or something. Nice. It's really good. I like it a lot. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, Aaron Hunt wants to know what's our favorite tech of CES. Um, since I didn't get to see anything free sync, I don't know if I would even have said it was my absolute favorite anyways, but I feel like I would at least have experience seeing it or, or having seen the demo. I think I'm, I'm actually really intrigued with um, the next Asus uh, IPS line of, of monitors for gaming specifically. I heard those were pretty cool. Yeah, and so <laughs> technically I, I've understood that um, the 120 plus hertz uh, MG panel that they're making or that they already have out, they're pushing it, they're trying to make it hit 144 hertz refresh rate with uh, IPS color reproduction. And I just want to be able to see it in action, whether it be 120 or 144 while I'm playing games with it. Yeah. Um, I think that was probably something I was most excited about. I did like the Kinetic Cooler that um, cool Chip uh, Technologies w uh, had worked on with Cooler Master just because I found it really interesting and I actually didn't know that there was a prior version of it that was created before using similar technology. Right. Um, so, but either way, I still found it interesting and I like seeing um, physics applied to something like that. I still don't think that they're going to make, th it's just going to be a really premium price tag if they can get it to the point where it's starting to get slow because they're seeing, right. seeing everything. That's like a one of one piece every single time and, yeah. and I don't know. I, we'll see. Who, who knows what they're going to be able to do. But um, Hopefully I, if more similar offerings like that come out, it'll lower the price down due to the competition and stuff like that. But well, uh, just as more, the more they spend, the more time they spend uh, trying to figure out how to manufacture it in a faster way, that's going to that's gonna make it cost a lot less for them to make, yeah, too. So. Yeah, true. My favorite thing at CES was the massage chairs. <laughs> Hands down, those were the best things. Uh, the, no other, no other booth made me moan like that. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. That, that's any indication uh, of the good time I was having. Whew. 
Oh, God. Um, someone's asking if we have any tips uh, for covering live conventions, such as CES and PAX, because he's going to be going to PAX South next week. Cool. Uh, and I'm guessing, uh, this is, oh, this is Paul. I'm a provost, of course. Okay. <laughs> I, I usually just read the comment first really and then read the person's name after. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, Paul. So, um, I don't know. Let's see. The first thing that comes to my mind is stay hydrated because you're, you're going to be, I mean, it sounds so basic and, and duh, but um, yeah. it is easy to forget when you're so busy running around. Bring a bottle of water with you to the convention. For sure. Even better, bring like a, a thermos and then fill it up if there's like a water fountain or something because usually water at, that, at these types of things isn't cheap and that way you can yep. just keep refilling it and stay hydrated. Uh, one of the biggest things I found is like I had so much more energy just from drinking water throughout the day as opposed totally to true. like, I'm so thirsty. I almost, I almost spent like 12 bucks on the juice walking to Palazzo for the, the hotel suites because I was like, I was vaping vape a little a lot bit too, I was going to say, yeah. I hadn't had any water all day. We were like five hours in and I just see this juice bar and these like little girls like or little ladies are like dumping juice and like, you know, they're blending the blending the fruits and stuff and, and it look, like smells really good. And I'm like walking by on my way to Corsair and I'm just like, Oh, juice. <laughs> Dragging yourself slowly. Look like to a it. zombie. And then Aaron was like, No, we got to go. It's $12. I'm like, ah, yeah. Yeah. So get water. Um, bring extra batteries for whatever camera or microphone or LED lights that you have or mic, you know, anything like that. Batter, extra batteries definitely will save your butt uh, in, in certain scenarios. Um, My suggestion is actually to bring uh, power packs. For yes, sure, for absolutely. anything for you need phone, to charge. Tablet, yeah. Yep, absolutely a must. Those I usually, are I usually bring at least two, so this way I always have a charged one at the end of each day, ready to go for the next morning. Yeah. Depending on the the brand that you have, too, sometimes it takes longer than the amount of time you actually have spent in your hotel to charge. Right. So it might, uh, you might say, oh, this is great. I've got two and everything's per, or I've got one and everything's perfect, but it takes eight hours to charge, and you're only in your room for six hours. Yeah. So that that really hurts. Yeah. Um, so having two is is way better. Um, yep. And as as doing? another pro tip and not so not as technical as, as the last two suggestions we gave is take every event as an opportunity to network your butt off. Oh yeah. Because That's a good that one. is the biggest thing that you walk away. At the end of the day you've got some nice videos that you get to post and they'll get a few views. But at the end of the day, it's all about networking and who you meet can help you can can go a long way after the event with getting hardware review samples or totally just true. getting you know doing collab work stuff like that yeah. and um, a lot more support for whatever kind of channel you're running. So definitely network. Put yourself out there because everyone there, even the, the execs and the professionals that are there, they're just as you know they're just as shy and nerdy and, and introverted as, as as you are as, as we are. So you know just extending a friendly hand, handshake, introducing yourself, right. you'll see that a lot of people are much more reciprocative to that sort of thing right. than you might expect and. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. So definitely network. Bring business cards. Definitely. Definitely bring your definitely business cards. Definitely have business cards. And, yes. And uh, make some make some friends. Yes. All right. I absolutely. So agree that's. With that. I think we pounded that one into the ground. Yeah. Um, let's see. Does Newegg sponsor people for gaming or anything? Actually, they do. We do sponsor yeah. uh, Team. Is it Team Solomon? No, it's not no. Team Solomon. We we do I sponsor forgot. like some kind of League of Legends league. It bounces around too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not really sure. You have to be really good. That's important. <laughs> we don't sponsor we, people that aren't good at games. Yeah, but we don't actually control who gets sponsored at all. We just know that. It yeah, happens, I don't so. even know who we're sponsoring right now. Yes. I just remember we were at one point. I don't even know if we still are, but at one point we were sponsoring a. I think it was a League of Legends team. So we do it in moderation. Hmm. Um. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Ba -da. What else? What else? We should answer a lot more questions. Someone's asking me. There's a show, shot called Range. Any more questions? Is that it, guys? Is Newegg still selling e-cigs? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Despite the fact that I do use e-cigs occasionally. Well, now I want to know. Um, I, you know what? I think I've looked before. I think they have a very limited amount, but uh, but I think they are there. You're looking it up right a, now. They have a marketplace section for it. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Oh, they got VTC fives. Those are good batteries. Is that a good price? That's a great price. Okay. And those are those are the hardest batteries to find right now. Really? There are so many clones. In fact, there's a good chance those are clones. <laughs> yeah, that explains it. Those are clones, for sure. But still, right. you know. All right. Worth checking out. Cool. Um, what else? Hmm. I think that's that's pretty much it. So I think we're we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good we're good. We're we're definitely clearly good. you guys know all of the things and because, you have no more questions for us because that's it or they're just smart and know that we don't have any of the answers. That's that's another possibility. Also smart. 
Um, all right. So moving us forward, we don't have a tremendous amount of content left. I apologize for that. I didn't actually expect us to go through this quickly. Oh, we have a tremendous amount. OK, we have a tremendous amount of content actually, left. Actually, no, we don't. We had a tremendous amount of content left. <laughs> we'll just play more happy birthday songs if we run out of material. God, no, we're not doing We've that. We've got 22,000 songs, We're Steve. definitely not We've doing that. We've got plenty of material. No. Don't worry about it. Um, so you got, you've got something about GTA V. Oh, yeah, GTA V got pushed back. Those yes. rock star bastards. Um, it back. was going to get released later this month, and I was super excited, and then uh, just found out that it's being pushed back another two months to March 24th. Uh, the PC port, of course, is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's a bummer, but obviously they got to work out some bugs, make sure that it's you know all fit for testing and stuff like that. I'm happy with that. It's fine. And they and on Rockstar's website, as as you have pulled up right there, they released some 4K images, some screen grabs of the game, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, when you just zoom in, you see the the attention to detail, even in the in the, in the landscapes way in the back. You can see uh, that. Uh, scroll up. It's got, it's got a, it's got really good, um, it's got a really good engine behind it, and they spent a lot of time, um, making everything look pretty. It's crazy, man. Very nice draw distance. I mean, you can see like little trees way in the back there, and little trees, new trees. See little the little trees. bridge. You see the bridge way in the back. Mm -hmm. That's Sexy. freaking awesome, man. Sexy. That's, I can't wait to I'm going to disappear. Again. You and I are going to disappear for like a month straight when this game hits PC. Dude, you told me that there's going to be 30 man. Um, yeah. uh, yeah, do, do 30 man. Well, okay, so you can do up to 30 man online, okay. GTA Online, but there's also going to be heist missions. Now, I forgot to, to check. Oh, I thought it was 30 if, man heist. Okay. I forgot to check if that includes heists in the 30 person limit. Okay. Um, it, it might not. It might be like 30 man free for all team deathmatch type thing, gang wars. Yeah. Ha, ha, what have you. Um, but you can like you know it's awesome. You can fly jets and stuff, and um, and there, I think you you'll also be able to go into first person mode uh, in, on the PC port, like you, any, anywhere, like on foot As or driving. You can and the, like even driving, they have like the speedometer and stuff, which looks pretty cool. I'm just I'm so excited for that game. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I'm I sad did. it's been pushed, but I guess I understand. Yeah. They better not delay it again though, otherwise. Otherwise, we're waiting even longer. Otherwise, I'll still buy it, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not buying it anymore. I'm like, shut up. Oh, You're still going to buy it. I got a last minute tweet in that, that I do want to answer. Uh, Smat Chimo says, uh, or asks, what's a good entry level 1080p monitor less than $300 preferably? And actually, I, I, it's not really entry level, but I really like the, uh, the, the VG. God, I always forget $300? Why don't you just go for a 2560 by 1440 for $300? Well, uh, well, dude, if you want to have faster response rate. Um, refresh rate? Re yeah, refresh rate. Give me nice a second here. Let me try and get you that. Hold on. Uh, uh, let me look this up real quick. Nice uh, uh. Well, I mean, you can go for like a like like my panels. Uh, what should we call it? You can overclock the refresh rate on it. It was three hundred dollars, and it's twenty five right. sixty by fourteen forty. Um, of course, if his video card isn't exactly uh, you know powerful enough to run something higher res than ten eighty, mm -hmm. then I understand. And of course, you know. The, the response time is going to be a bit better on like a TN panel, of course, than an IPS. But the colors are worse. So it the colors are worse. Everybody says or the people. I don't know. I don't. I don't talk to many gamers that tell me that that the color reproduction was way more important than the, the gamers I talk to. Just really want the faster refresh rate and faster response time. So uh, this is a 1080p, 144 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time monitor from ASUS. It's the VG248QE. For some reason, can never remember the stinking number. One? It's like 270. I want to say. Okay. Um, and and maybe you're you're gonna be able to find a 1440p one that's that's better that's maybe a little bit cheaper, um, but but this is the one that I was. Let's see what Newegg has it for. Um, cheaper, this is the one obviously. That I have. <laughs> <laughs> we always have it cheaper. Uh, silly Steve. Oh God. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just because I haven't silly, seen Steve. how much it is right now. You're so silly. Yeah, it's still like 270. Um, but anyways, I, I like the monitor. It, it's great, and um, I really recommend anybody that, that really likes FPS style gameplay that really needs to have the fast um, response, the fastest response time, is go for something that's at least 120 hertz refresh rate. Yeah. Um, and 1080p is great because that resolution is going to be great for people systems that can't push 1440p. Even if you wanted to set the resolution lower on a 1440p monitor, um, if you just wanted to pick this monitor up, that'd be great. And unfortunately, I don't know any 1440p monitor pricing off the top of my head that would be cheaper. Do you know I don't need off the top of your head. No, not for okay. not for those exact specs. Right. Okay. So, so that. But ASUS is a good brand. I have an ASUS monitor at home, and I love it. 
<laughs> it's great. It's amazing. Oh, you have the same one, don't you? No, I have a two. I have a VG two seven eight. Okay. Which is a bit more expensive. Um, although I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, a, 27 it's, a, 27 it's a twenty seven. It's a twenty seven inch. But it's yeah. it's two milliseconds, which isn't quite as fast, but okay. still still not too bad. Um, and it is one forty four hertz refresh rate. There you go. Which I do like. Owning. Um, so I guess since we're talking about games, Kyle, why don't I just ask what games you've been playing lately? You know, you know, Steve. We always go back. I feel like, and I, you know, to this topic and like, what game is everyone playing? And I always say like, pretty much the same thing. Like, I don't have any time for games because I'm always like making videos and stuff. You work all the time, man. I I know it's a problem, but um, no, it's a good thing. But yeah, but uh, I actually did manage to squeeze a little bit of game time for myself uh, in the last couple weeks, particularly the last two weeks leading up to CES. Okay. Um, I got a little bit of Walking Dead in. Um, I bought that game because I just wanted something that was really chill and very like story driven that wasn't too intensive, and I got I got completely hooked. Um, my I've wife, only, my yeah. wife and I will usually see you jump on. We can usually tell that you're benchmarking based on the games that you choose. Right. But when we saw Walking Dead, we're like, that's not a benchmark. He's actually playing a game, and <laughs> Carrie like, Carrie keeps telling me that she's like, oh, Kyle's on, Kyle's on, but he's playing Walking Dead, so we can't like play with him, but he's on. That's we that's such an indication of how little I play games. Like when it's like a big deal, like wait, Kyle. Kyle's, Kyle's on. Playing a game? Yeah. It looks like he's playing a game on Steam. What's he, what's he playing? Yeah. Um, so I've been playing that for the last few last few weeks, and I've been having a blast with it. It's Sweet. just so it's so character driven, and um, it, it really feels like you're watching an episode of The Walking Dead. It's very dramatic, uh, despite the cel shaded kind of cartoony look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is it's really stylized. dark. It's really dark, yeah. and it, and it just works really well. Um, and you know you get to make fun choices and stuff that uh, the game adapts to. Sweet. Um, but I'm I'm digging it so far, and probably I'm going to be playing that until GTA 5 comes out for PC. And then, like I said, you're going to beat that. Me for a while. You're going to beat that way before GTA 5 comes out. Oh but, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about? Um, but I'm just saying. I don't know if I'm going to pick up another game before. Get another Telltale game, GTA. man. There's oh yeah, a bunch okay. That just came out. True. I mean, this is the first Telltale game I've I've uh, I've played. So mm. after this, I, I'm going to want to play like Wolf Among Us. I heard is amazing. Really funny too. And they have a it's Game good. of Thrones one out now. I haven't played it yet, but I heard it's amazing. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're killing it. There's Hell Borderlands one too. Right now. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. But what do you? What did you think of uh, The Walking Dead then? No, oh, I liked it. I know. I mean, like I said, it's just it's really fun. Um, like like I said, it's 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 also a good game for the living room because I because you can just chill. Exactly. Yeah. You can just chill and uh, sit back on the couch and whatnot. Cool. Um, I do I do just like because I, I like that I like the style I like the style of it and I, I like how dark and gritty it is. Right. At first I was like, oh, it's gonna be like an E for everyone game, but it's not at all. It's really dark. No, it's really they, they morbid. Cuss and you know, they're killing people and stuff, and uh, kids almost get killed in it. It's scary. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy it. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only on the third episode of the first season, so I'm still still have some ways to go. But cool. Digging it so far. What about you, dude? You um, I know so, you've been playing a lot of Lead Dangerous. Uh, yeah, and, and it's a lot of fun, but it's a huge time investment for me. Yeah. So when I want to jump on and play for a little bit, all right, I'll tell you a funny story just to give an example of, of how, how depressing it can be to play that game when yeah. you only have you know like maybe an hour to play or something. Yeah. So I've been, I've been on my way to uh, rare commodity uh, locations that are basically selling rare commodities that you get more money for if you trade. So I'm trying to develop some of my own trade routes that are really efficient, and Reddit has a ton of them, so I'm trying to develop mine off of that. Uh -huh. So I jump from location to location trying to create that, and every time I get to a certain point where I start buying the commodities and then traveling to the next location to buy them again and then travel 150 year, light years away from that to sell them for the most amount of money in return, I end up getting called by a friend that's like, hey, dude, just got the game first time, so excited, let's go play. And I'm like, awesome. Yeah. So let me, let me nope. stop where I'm flying right now. I'll fly to you real quick. It's like 80 light years. It takes me a while to get there. Finally get there. And we, and we have fun. You know, we go around shooting stuff, do some missions, you know, whatever. Um, and then I'm like, all right, now, now next time I play, I'll, I'll, I'll fly to another location and I'll, I'll, I'll be ready again to make more money because I need money because every time I go out fighting, I always get damaged or something and I need to replace things, repair things. And you can make a lot of money if you bounty hunt, but at the time, bounty hunting was still kind of broken. Um, so if you were if you were killing people uh, over time, it would a actually render you as wanted, and the police would go after you. And sometimes they would go after you even if you weren't wanted. So anyways, mm -hmm. I got away from that for a while. Point being, I like get back to where I need to go. I'm flying. I'm. I spent probably like 45 minutes getting back from helping a friend before to where I wanted to be, and and I got I got 
um, interdicted, which means I get pulled out of warp, um, and I fought the guy, killed him off, got a little bit of a bounty from that. Anyways, finally get where I'm trying to go after about 45 minutes. I'm coming in hot to this this landing zone in, inside of a, uh, a star base, and they're basically small slits, not much bigger than your, your actual ship itself. And there are methods to which you can enter the starport if you're carrying um, illegal materials. And so I like to practice that from time to time. Now, I was a little rusty, so I went in a little hot, right? I'm coming in, I'm aiming for the slit right here, and this is my jet coming in, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm getting, I'm a little high, I'm a little high, so I bring it down, you're a little low, you're a little low, cougar, you're a little low, cougar, boom, oh. right into the wall, and I was just like, you did why not did I do that? Why did I do that? I had rare commodities that were worth a lot of money in my, in my cargo hold, I was just autopiloting in, I thought I could just give that a little practice. I wasn't thinking about the risks involved. I also wasn't thinking about the fact that I had not um, docked with another starbase for a while. So when I died, I returned to the original starbase I had started from at the beginning of that day. And, and so when, much you, when you lose a ship in Elite Dangerous, do you lose everything that was on that ship as well? You do, plus uh, to repair or repurchase the ship again, it, the insurance is typically 10% of the cost of everything on your ship. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't count cargo, so it's like I had upgraded guns and stuff. So okay. I, I paid something like 77 grand for my for my Cobra to be repaired. So And I only had like 300 at the time, which isn't a lot of money, um, but I really just need to, I need to like, just travel and make money now. I need to start doing my my trade route. I might even start fighting, but at this point, I just don't want to die again. I want to build up my money a little bit to maybe like like a million, and then start flying for fighting gotcha. uh, for the purpose of bounty hunting. I should say. If I had more time, that's probably the first <laughs> game I would play, just because you make it sound so fun. Honestly, dude, I just I just started playing Robocraft. Uh huh. And um, I know that game's been out for a little while. It's if I could if I could recommend any game to play <clears throat> with friends or otherwise, even even your fiance I think might like this game. Really? Does, does she like to play with Legos when she was younger? Did uh, she like to? Not so much. Okay, she's not a builder creator, right? She played with dolls. Okay. Like a normal girl. It's so sad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. But you know she's she you know what I I told her last night I said, you know it'd be great if we could play some video games together and she yeah. she was like all right well let's just not kill anything while we're doing it. This is that game. Then. So it seems like you know robots pretty pretty harmless, right? Yeah. It's like, well, it's actually like battle bots, and they beat each other up to the death. It, it kind of is <laughs> actually. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. But so, I mean, it's not like it's not like they're they're bleeding, right? I'll tell no. them like, honey, they're not real. They're they don't have feelings. It and is she'll literally start crying because <laughs> she feels sorry for them. It is just like giving you a set of Legos and saying, build me something out of these Legos. Okay. And, and you, you can use money to buy more in-game currency so it is, to buy it's, more. So it is battle bots. You build a Lego and then you send it out and have it fight to another dude. Right, well, another, a group, another, a group. It's, oh, I, it's think a group. It's like, I think it's like 12 and 12, but I can't remember how many people are oh, on each okay. team. So and it's the, a big bloodbath or a bot bath. <laughs> it's a bot bath. And if you Sweet. build with the intent of, of uh, redundancy, then when you get shot and, and lose like tires, let's say, or wheels or whatever, then if you've built multiple sets, then you won't have to worry about that because you'll still be able to, to move. At some point, you might be just left with you and your little seat and like one wheel and you're just spinning around in a circle. That is hilarious to me. I, th I find that so funny. But if you um, put like a blade on, on your robot, does that mean it's like a, you're a spinning blade and no one can get near you? No, you can basically fire mm. rounds at people to kill them. So there's like okay. a couple different types of guns and then there's different tiers. And as you get higher can up I in the game- Can see a quick like gameplay video yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll give me a better idea. Yeah. I know, obviously the, the concept sounds super simple, but I just kind of want to see what it looks like. Yeah, give me a second, let me make sure. And does your robot, do you control your robot or is oh, it yeah, kind of yeah. like- No, you pilot oh, you your do. own robot. Yeah. Oh, Okay. As, and if you get higher up, it ends up. Um, I should say I started playing this with uh, with Dylan, with D-Man Duck. Okay. And so I found it. Do you do you get more parts for your vehicle or for your bot as you level up or something, or is it more like right. everyone has access to the same? You have access pieces? on tier one to all the tier one stuff. All right. So okay. the tier one stuff is like basic blocks that are free, and then you end up starting to create uh, like the the worst robot you've ever seen. And then as you start playing, you level yourself up, which allows you to uh, get access to new, better equipment um, as you as you level through the tiers. I'm, I'm simplifying this as much as possible for the sake of, yeah, yeah. of you guys and you uh, just getting the idea. But yes, as you go up, you get to you get to the point where you're making things like this, like these huge walkers or this massive tank or this jet. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's out of control, really. You're not getting to that point probably for a while. And I have okay. way more fun in tier one, tier two uh, fights anyways, because it's 
It's where people are, are trying to take equipment that is not recommended to use in the lower tiers. Right. Or I shouldn't say it's not recommended. It's not intended to be used. So you can buy like tier three, tier four weaponry and put it in a tier two car okay. that's super small because it has to be small in order to fit in that tier. I see. So imagine like... Uh, oh, tier also affects the dimensions of your robot and it, how big you can get, make it. Well, let's just say that everything has a cost, including the blo blocks that you use in order to create, okay. a dimen to, to create the certain size that you want it to be. So yeah. that affects its dimension. Okay. Okay. Also the quality, because you have certain armored ones, mm -hmm. and then also the weaponry. So you can put this massive like tier three uh, railgun on your on your vehicle and just have one dude on a seat With a and, then, and then or and then and like and like and like uh, little little like two wheels or three four wheels, you uh -huh. know, and then you're just little teeny tiny uh, uh, quad. Yeah. with this massive railgun. And that's the way D-Man actually likes to play. He okay. likes to play with these really, really small vehicles and, and run around and shoot stuff. Uh, myself, I like creating um, redundancy in the in the things that I build. So I like making several wheeled vehicles so that this way if the wheels end up getting um, damaged or, or whatever, I still have multiple wheels. But what will end up happening is if you don't spin the vehicle so that it accepts damage on all parts simultaneously while you're holding fire on somebody, you end up getting damaged completely on one side and your car just falls on one side with all the wheels on the other side still intact. And then when you hit the gas, you just kind of go in circles. Okay. So um, it's actually, I think so watching you play very, would be funny. Like the robot it's, it's very reactive to the damage that you take. Oh yeah. Like. Oh yeah. Like it's 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 just like Legos. Like the the right. damage you make to your like this dude, you're not getting there anytime soon. Like this is this is that this shouldn't intense? even. So that's this like is a high like level robot, right? Yeah, there. exactly. It's got gliding ability on it, so it gets up really high and then it glides. And How this are guy's you supposed got, to compete against robots that are like this in the game? Like, you you won't get to that point. Let's <clears throat> see. So he's got to repair uh, uh, guns on there to be able to repair other robots. Um, but yeah, if, if you're going to get to this point, it's gonna just take you time is all I mean. And technique is, is as important as the design of your robot. It looks which like they're is, on Tatooine. <laughs> yeah, they've only got like a couple different map types that I've seen so far. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I find it fascinating. What do you guys think actually? You should check the chat. It looks what you, fun. Would you, guys, would you guys play this? Or do you guys play this, I should say? It's like it's um, like Minecraft with... It is, it's voxels. Twisted metal. See, see, that, see this, is, this is what I want that, to that's see what you I do. Would make, the oh. cow. <laughs> make a, was that a cow or a pig? So, make a pig robot with a big turret, with a big railgun <laughs> on it. So the, the I started taking pictures of the funny robots I've seen, but people start to get really um, uh, uh, inventive with their robots. Yeah, I'm sure. And I've Probably seen people... Yeah, well, the one thing I've seen people do is is there's a point where you're going to start having boss battles where people that are higher tier go against you and your entire team of like tier twos, tier threes, right. or whatever you are. Um, and sometimes it's groups of them versus you. But basically, you'll see people that are that'll do things that are just trying to like idle for points because you can do nothing in a match and still get points to level. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've seen uh, little people make little houses. Okay. So that you start floating as soon as every round starts. And as soon as the round counts down to zero, everybody drops onto the ground and starts going or flies away or whatever. So I saw a guy that built a house. I saw somebody else build a giant uh, scorpion. I've, I've seen somebody build the most radically funny looking vehicles you've ever seen. Um, and, and those alone make it worth playing for me just to see what people make. They're really right. funny. That so, sounds cool. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think that'd be almost be funner to play like in the tier one, tier two levels where no one knows what they're doing. It's and, way more fun. And all their all their robots just turn out like like a like Sid's toys from Toy Story. <laughs> how he just kind of like mashes them together, and it's like a baby with like a GI Joe arm and stuff like that. <laughs> Or whatever it is. You would make Sounds the like funniest. I feel like if you were gonna do it and like do it for a stream or something, you would have pre-created funny vehicles that's, that you would just bust out. That's on. the beauty of this game, I think, is making something horrendous and having it being brought to life and seeing it function in a world with other things that are that it's interacting with or whatever. Oh yeah. I think that'd be fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it free to play or is it? Oh, it's totally free to play. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Jenny right. played it for a little bit too. I'm not cool. sure. I'm not sure how much <clears throat> she likes it, but uh, but yeah. I think it was awesome. If you guys, if you guys decide the, to play this game, or if you played it before, let us know on Twitter or on um, the YouTube comments when it goes. Yeah, up on, on the YouTube comments too. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. Um, so maybe we can. Just get, curious. Maybe we can play a game with them. That'd maybe be we can cool. Play a game with you guys. That'd be cool. R I battle to the death. It's uh, we can get in up Robo to four Bros. people into our group. Okay. And that's the only way we can guarantee that people will be able to play with one another. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, if there's enough viewers that are playing, I bet if we had like 50, 60 people just constantly entering, like, all right, everybody, get ready. 
all right, enter now. So we'd hit E, I think it's EB or EP or, no, it's EB. Um, yeah. It basically launches you into the queue and everybody that's queued up will usually go into the next one. So if there's okay. a lot of us that are doing it, we're almost guaranteed as long as we sync up to, to get it. Yeah. To launch at the same time, be in the same game. Um, but yes, we are actually probably wrapping it up, guys. I don't think there's anything else we need to say unless there's something else you wanted to mention. Wrapping it up. I'm Sweet. good. Sweet. And I will probably be playing some Evolve in the other room. Do you want to play some Evolve? Yeah, let's play some Evolve. Sick. Sick. Sweet. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this show. Don't forget to stay tuned for Yoked, which will be on Wednesday coming up. Uh, I don't know what, we don't even have a time period for that, do we? It's just yeah. as soon as it's, it's edited and up. So check us out on Wednesday, next Wednesday, as well as another All Tab show where we will have another special guest, which unfortunately wasn't available for this show. We have another special guest that will be here. I don't believe Friday. you anymore. Now when you say you have a special you probably guest, shouldn't. you ruined it this one time. I'll never believe you about that again. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yes, but that special guest will be, will be re-signing with us at another time. So aside from that, though, we do have Scott Watson that'll be here next Friday. Nice. So um, he's from Tech Report, right? He's from Tech Report. I like Scott Watson. He's a, he's a good guy. He's freaking awesome, man. So smart, that man. So smart. So smart. He's so smart. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. Thank Thanks you very again. much. Stop copying me. Stop copying me. <laughs> have a good weekend, everybody.